we've had an opportunity to go through the entire tool panel here in 3D Coats Paint Workspace, we're not quite done yet because there are a number of tools that reside inside the interface in other locations that are equally important. So the first one we want to look at is through the textures menu here. If we go to the adjust section, if you're coming from a Photoshop background, you might recognize a lot of these same options here, such as hue, saturation, and lightness, brightness, and contrast. And the gamma correction is the same as using the exposure adjustment. So our equivalent in Photoshop is going to the image menu under adjustments. And you can choose the same menu. Now, obviously, Photoshop has been around a lot longer than 3D Coat, so it's going to be more extensive in its array of tools in certain areas, such as all these different adjustments. If you need more control than what you find in 3D Coat, then you can quickly jump over into Photoshop, make these adjustments, make these modifications, and get back into 3D Coat without any real fuss. So let's look at using the same tool and 3D Coat. So we go to Textures menu under the Adjust section. Go to Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. And obviously I want to choose the layer that I want to make the adjustment to. Now I could apply an adjustment to all the layers if I want. If I want to add a little bit more contrast to all the layers, or maybe a little more brightness, maybe a little more saturation, and so on. So. Um, I could check this and then make that adjustment if I want. Otherwise, I may want to isolate this particular layer. In this case, I do. So I hold down the Alt key, just as I would in Photoshop, and click on the visibility icon. The next thing I want to do is, just for reference sake, I want to probably use the sampler tool to pick the base color of this layer. So I'll click on that, and now what I want to do is bring up the color palette and I want to switch from the bar picker to the triangular picker and uh, I may want to give myself a little bit more real estate. You can undock it and bring it into the viewport if you need. So now let's bring this back up. Let's go to hue, saturation, and lightness. And I've got preview turned on. I can turn that off if I need. Okay, so let's go back to our defaults here. Let's try zero. And our saturation and lightness, our midpoint is 100. Okay, so if you scrub all the way to the right, it would stop at 200 for saturation and lightness. If I scrubbed all the way to the left, it would stop at zero. Right? But with hue, it's, it's a little bit different. So as you can see, the color that I chose, where it resides on the color wheel, now, if I scrub all the way to the right, it's going to stop at 180 degrees. Okay, it's going to happen the same way if I should scrub all the way to the left. Same thing. And you can see on the color wheel here, it's stopping 180 degrees here. So I like to use this as a visual reference for what color I'm actually adding as I slide a little bit along this scale here. Okay, so let's go back to zero. So if I wanted to add a little bit more kind of a pinkish tone to this, then obviously I probably would want about 20 or 30 degrees to the right or in the positive direction. So let's go try 25. And you can see how that works. If I want a little bit of green, then I obviously would need negative 90 degrees. There you go. So in this case, I want just a little bit more of a, a yellowish orange color. So I would need negative, I'll say 15. All right. And that can bump the saturation up a bit, 120. And the lightness, maybe bring that down. Also happen to have the option to apply the adjustment to a free selection. Likewise, I could use the hide poly tool, and if I wanted to apply it to just the hidden faces, I would check this. 
I could limit it to the meshes in the scene, which reflects your sub-objects panel, the same thing. The surface material reflects what you have here in the surface material panel. And I could turn preview off if I need again. I'll hit OK. We could adjust our gamma. It's at one by default. If I want it to be lighter, I want to go to the left. So let's say 90. I'm sorry, 0.9. Be a little bit brighter. 1.2. A little bit darker. Okay, same thing with brightness and contrast, as well as CMYK. And RGB. transform color space okay so once I've made those adjustments I can hold the alt key click on the visibility icon and there you have it so that's going to complete our quick look at using adjustments to make tonal changes to our textures in the next video we're going to take a quick look at making adjustments to either sharpen or blur our textures. So stay tuned and we'll see you then.